Yes, it's all. Good morning. Okay, good Sunday, I should say. And I believe that the weekend has been good. Praise the Lord forevermore. We are sharing truth this morning on the power of a joint heir. Coming from uh, Romans chapter 8, uh, 14 through 18. <clears throat> You are warmly welcome to the Really Really Knowing God channel. I am Pastor Larry Adenekon. The channel is packaged to inform as well as inspire you into real knowledge of the living God. Powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Age Inspiration, the place. This is a daily gem devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. Now, if you've grown used to the acts of God and now you want to really learn His ways, this is home for you. We are praying. Our Father and God, we thank you. We give you praise to God, especially for today, another day in which we will enter into your house and that which makes us glad. Take all the praise in Jesus' name. As we spend time before your people go uh, to church, spend a few minutes together with one another, we ask God that you breathe upon these our moments together. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. So can Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the bondage of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join self with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Okay. Uh, it looks short, but then I think it's loaded. Let's spend some time on this. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You can see that uh, uh, this um, <clears throat> actually corroborates what he said in verse, uh, was it 9 now? Where I said, with anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ, it is none of his. Here again he's saying, as, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Okay, so it is important that when somebody is a true child of god one of the things we are going to see about that person's life is being led by the spirit being led by the spirit um this is very very key and he uses it as an indication that yes truly such people are the children of god if anybody is being led by the spirit yes that is a um an evidence <clears throat> a proof excuse me that that person is uh, a child of god hallelujah and so for those of us who are children of God, it means that we have in place a provision to be led by the Spirit. Okay? And where we do not take advantage of that provision, or where we allow only very little of it to show in our lives and in our days, in our conduct, then we are missing out on the big thing or the biggest thing that God has arranged for us in that we can be led by the Spirit. Many times, even though the Spirit of God is there to lead us, we do not allow the Spirit of God to lead us. We do not even give Him a chance to lead us. And when we don't give Him that chance to lead us, then we are the ones that are going to live lives shorter. <laughs> um, shorter is not the word. Smaller or lower than we should live. Um, we allow some form of shortfall in our lives. Um, you are supposed to be a child of God, but you find out that you are living like 70% child of God. <laughs> you are living like 50% a child of God because you are not allowing the Spirit of God to lead you the way it ought to lead you. But when the Spirit of God is leading you and leading you, yeah, then you are really, truly a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God. That's what the Bible is, is teaching here. It is for as many as are led by the, the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. May we not be some form of pseudo son of God, you know, in Jesus' mighty name. Okay. Then he went on to say, because you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cried, Abba, Father. I want to talk about that one. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again. In other words, you had the spirit of bondage before. That's why the Bible says that some people, they will have been all their lifetime subject to the fear of death. That is the spirit of bondage when one is not yet born again. That is the spirit that, that, that binds you to fear, that makes you, um, that makes you live a life 
full of fears, different types of fears, you know, that exist in the life. And it's a form of bondage. So when he says again, he says you have actually been taken out of that bondage. And the spirit that you have been given is not the same type that, that used to exist before or in, um, in whose charge you were, if you like. Okay, but the spirit that you have now is not that spirit of bondage again, but you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, uh, cry out, Abba, Father. And uh, I, I would like to talk about that a little bit so that somebody may catch something from there and use it to your advantage. Now, look at this Abba, Father. Some people believe that. Or say the, the, the word Abba is just an Aramaic for Father. Okay, why would you just be saying Father, Father? Why would you say father in Yoruba and say father in English again, you know, or say father in French and say father in English again? That's not exactly what it means. What, what, what this thing means is this. It's an endearment of some sort. It's, um, it's a name that you, gave, that you give your father, just like we say dad now or daddy now. And what it actually represents is the relationship of a young young um, child with that of the of, of the father okay or which many times you carry on actually into adulthood because that's what you have always called your father i know some some people they call their grandmother nene i know some people they call their mother some other name you know <laughs> i don't want to sell some of these things here because some people will know the people i'm talking about they call their mother some other name is something they call right from when they were children and they have carried it on right into adulthood but it was something that gave them a special uh attention you know from the grandma or from the mother or from the dad or whatever it was something that gave them a special form of attention now this is where i'm going by the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father if you have a revelation of what i'm talking about there is a relationship you can have between you and god that can um allow you to relate like just what i was describing um something between you and god that is um i don't know how to call it a pet name <laughs> or something you call god that that evokes that generates some specialness between god and you the one that makes i have have several children around me that's a particular one that when she wants something and she, my body language does not suggest you know that she's likely to get that thing you say that is me <laughs> it's me you know that kind of a thing that's that's the card that she plays to get what she wants this thing about abba father that's the way you can play that card between you and god if you understand what i'm saying this morning i know that i'm struggling you know to pass across what i'm trying to say but i just pray that god will let somebody get what i'm saying this morning there's this card you can play <clears throat> that would uh, make you that will make you get something from that relationship that abba father kind of relationship uh between you and god and be able to enjoy god a little bit better than the average christian will enjoy god it's as in god is me just like i was saying about my daughter a minute or two ago yeah you know something like that between that's when i call it playing the abba father card and it's something that i particularly enjoy and i want to uh try and make other people enjoy as well but i know that it takes God to open your understanding and let you get catch this revelation and then you you will testify of this I'm sure you will testify of this I'm looking forward to sometime in the future when somebody maybe some months later somebody will refer to this in the comments box and and let me know that see what you have been saying about things have changed about me that's my prayer for you this morning in Jesus mighty name so let's go on now the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God again that's a big thing the spirit of God something inside makes you know that you are a child of god if for any reason you are not so sure you are always doubting am i really a child of god there's something still wrong there and now you need to get some counsel you need to get somebody to lead you and guide you out of all that and be truly truly born again so that the spirit of god is working together with you and and and, and um, um giving you a witness that you are truly a child of god and if children then hears hears of god joins hears with christ that's the big, the biggest one this morning. It is important for you to understand who an heir is. An heir is the person that will become the king next. Okay, the person that will become the king after the present one. That is the heir. Now, the Bible describes Christ as the heir. 
is the one that will inherit everything is the one that will now be in control of everything that's what the bible says god is going to hand over everything to him he's going to become in control of everything hallelujah now so some of these hairs the way they are seated is that they are seated on the right hand of the present king okay that's the way they are seated all right now it says that christ is the heir. but if we are the children of god then we are also heirs, just like christ and we are actually joint heirs with christ in other words it's not just christ that is the heir, and we are his younger brothers and sisters which is true but you see the bible is saying we are not just younger than sisters; we are also heirs together with him in other words there is going to be some form of rearrangement in heaven when the church gets there what am i talking about you know the bible says that christ sits upon the right hand of god right now there's going to be some form of rearrangement but when we arrive because we are also going to sit together with him in his own throne oh that throne is going to be something really really special because we are all going to be together with him inside that throne because we are joint hairs now when you understand that thing there are certain things that uh, the king wants to do but it delegates to the hair to do on his behalf or the queen wants to do but delegates to the hair to do on his behalf and now you know that you are a joint hair with with christ it means that there are things that god wants to do upon this earth that he is delegating to us and when you have that understanding you know that you are not a small person here the bible calls us an amb- ambassadors of christ that's what the bible calls us the president of a nation cannot go to that other nation to do things he can be in many places at the same time and that's why there are ambassadors who will represent his interests who will do what he wants so also we are ambassadors of christ hallelujah but we are actually more than ambassadors and that's what i want you to understand this morning you are actually bigger than an ambassador you are in the air so you you have things delegated to you there are some measure of authority that you can exercise yourself in to make things happen in heaven (laughs) you know apart from things happen here you can make some things happen in heaven but you need to get what i'm talking about this morning god needs to reveal what i'm talking about to you this morning it will change your christianity and the way you look at god the way you look at the things of god the way you understand the things of god the way you see yourself the way you exercise authority while you are praying everything will change if you can get this thing i'm talking about you are an heir you are a joint heir with christ if you said you are just an heir it may not make you get it very well but when it says you are joint heir with christ oh the import of it is better delivered and i pray that somebody gets it this fine sunday morning in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ it will turn everything for you if you can just get what i'm talking about we are going to sit together in his throne together amen that's one number two even right now things are being delegated to us that's why you can issue some commands that will happen in heaven that's why you can issue some things that must be done upon the earth here because you are an heir you are a joint heir with christ let me leave it there this uh, sunday morning and allow you to just go and have a wonderful time at church this morning thank you thank you and thank you have a great week ahead of you